Well, how's it going? I'm Mark Duffy. Welcome to my channel. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to edit them photos in Lightroom and make them colours pop. If you've been on my Instagram page, you know that I'm a big fan of vibrant, punchy colours in my photography. So I'm going to go through step by step right now on how I achieve that through Lightroom. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into this. So the image we're going to walk on today is a scene from Dublin city centre, the capital of Ireland, where I'm from, the beautiful city that is Dublin. And you can see here, it's going to be of Custom House and the IFSC. And what a, what a building. What a building. Look at that. Just look at that building. It just looks like a Jedi fortress. Like all over the... Uh, they're, they're, like, they're like lightsabers down. Do you think they planned that? I know I planned this t-shirt. <laughs> you saw it. I know you saw it. Don't pretend you didn't see it. We all noticed it. Yeah. I planned it. I, I'm going to admit it. I planned it. and I, It's a good plan. It's a good plan. Anyway, let's get into this. So the first thing you need to do on this image is to reset all the settings and show you step by step how to get this image. So we just go down here and press reset. Then I'm gonna go up to the top section. I'm gonna work our way down each section in the, in the order that I usually edit them in. So the first thing I do is I bring my highlights down to control them. Usually down to minus 100, but if it doesn't need it, don't bring it down that far. Then the shadows I'm gonna increase. Again, you can go up to 100 and if you zoom in there, you can see the true difference. This is the beauty of photographing in RAW. So there's the original, and there's where the shadows boosted. Some difference. So I'm going to bring that back again because I don't like to bring them up that much. That'll be fine. Let's zoom back out again. Next thing I do is I add in some clarity. Not too much. You can go overboard, but I don't like to do it. I used to go plus 100, but not anymore. I think probably around 44 would be okay. Once you introduce clarity into an image, you're going to have a problem with vibrance. So you need to bring that back in again. Let's see how much we go. Maybe a bit more. Yeah, about there. 56 or 58 looks fine for me. I'm looking around the custom house and around the sky because that's really where the color is in this image. Next thing that we need to do is to control the whites and the blacks. So if you hold the up button down and drag right to brighten that white, you don't want to go too much because you're just going to burn these pixels out. Let me show you. Absolutely disgusting. So we'll bring that back and save your eyes. So I think probably about 14, let's see. That one's kind of blown out. You can see that whatever pixels are white are what's starting to burn out. Might bring that back a little bit there. And then we'll do the opposite then for blacks. We're gonna go left, hold the all button again. Scroll left. Now you can introduce a little bit more blacks than this, probably about 23. I don't usually go more than 25 on the blacks usually, because I'm gonna add in some contrast. Again, up to about 19 or 20 in that one. I like to add in subtle bits because you're just going to continually add them in. So the more subtle you go, the better control you have and the less you have to go back over and redo. So I'm going to change the actual um, white balance. I'm not happy with the white balance. The camera was selected at shade, but it's, it's more cloud. If I go to cloudy, you can see that's quite similar. Nothing really changed. But if I go to actual shade, this is true shade. You can see it adds in a good bit more yellow. It's probably, probably quite subtle at this stage, but later in the game, you will notice a bit different. So I'm just gonna add in 15 there. I'm gonna go down to tone curves. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the shadows down a little bit, only a pinch, a slight S curve, and we're gonna bring the highlights up again. And that's, that's it. And if I go here and I, Press this button here, this will toggle it on and off, and you can see the difference that it's done to the image. Not too much, but we don't want it too much. Bring that highlights back a little bit. Yeah. Okay, the next thing I do is I work on sharpening. So, the information I have available here. Now, if you don't see that information up, just press the button I. So, you might be blank there, so you press I. You're going to get the name the date and time and the size as the first set of information. You press I again, and you'll get the actual details of the shot. So 1.6 seconds, F11, ISO 50, 29 mils on a 16 to 35 2.8 lens. Uh, and because it's such a wide, even though it's a 29, still a pretty wide focal length, you can see that when I angle the camera up, it has actually skewed the view of the buildings and the buildings are all pinching in towards 
nearly the center. So we're gonna fix that now in a bit. First thing we need to do is the sharpening. So ISO 50, I have a rule, it's similar to Serge Ramilly's, if you ever see his page, I'll uh, leave a link in, in the description below. He has a rule of 100, the 100 rule for sharpening. So whatever the amount is plus luminance must equal 100. So I find with ISO 50, there's little to no noise. So we're gonna raise this to 80. I find this is what works for me uh, with an ISO of 50. And then I'm gonna move the luminance to 20. And then again, you can toggle on and off. So if you watch this window here, you'll see the big difference there. So you wouldn't have thought there'd be that much of a difference, but there was. Some people don't like the sharpening on Lightroom. I do, I think it's, I think it's pretty good. And I continually use it. So the next section we'll go down is lens correction. So I'm gonna zoom in to this. I'm gonna go a bit more, I'm gonna go three to one. Let's show you. Do you see the purple line on the right hand side and this yellowy green they're what we call chromatic aberrations. And some lenses get it worse than others, but all you have to do to get rid of it is go down to lens corrections and just select remove chromatic aberration. And there you go, it's gone. So if we toggle that on and off, it's gone. And then as well as that, to fix the distortion within the lens, we just go for enable profile corrections. Uh, Lightroom should auto automatically pick the lens should recognize the lens straight away it has and it's done an okay job at sorting it out you see the way it, get, it got rid of the vignette if you wanted to bring the vignette back in you can just drag that back to left and it'll bring right back to how the camera how much vignetting is on the lens but i want to add in my own vignetting later so we're going to go down to the next section i'm going to try and straighten up some of these lines so i just did a quick let me scroll up for some reason let's scroll down so I just do a quick one on this one. I know from the final photo, I just use auto. So I usually use auto first time we see how well it does. And it's not bad, it's not a bad job. Some people like Michael Kelly might beg to differ. And there's other ways through Photoshop, it's a bit more labor intensive to get them all straight. But for the, for the most part, that's pretty straight. If you compare, if you just hover over this vertical, you can see, especially watch for this line here. Pretty straight. They're all pretty straight. They could be they could be straighter, but I think for the whole overall look of the image, it actually works. So I'm gonna add in some vignetting. I like to bring the viewer's attention to the center of the image because a lot of the a lot of my focal points are usually towards the center. So that's what I'm gonna do now with the vignetting. Okay, so if we just bring in just a little bit, not too much. Again, I always say it. A little bit is better than too much. I think about there, about there. It might have been stronger in the final photo, but just when I'm editing this, I like it about there. I'm just going to feather it out. You can get rid of the feather, and that's what you—that's what you're seeing. You're just going to feather that. It starts at 50, but just bring it back a bit more. And toggle that on and off. Now, if there were highlights in the sky you wanted to retain, just drag the highlight bar. You can see it just retained a bit of detail now. Just bring that back again. You can see the difference. Don't need to do that in this case. That's all I, I, I touch here. I don't touch dehaze often and I never use grain. And I'm gonna scroll up and go back up to one of the more important sections of editing photos for me. And that is hue, saturation and luminance. And the first place I work on is the luminance. This is where you're controlling the brightness from channel to channel. So you can actually get the reds, brighten them up, darken them, slide them across. And as well as that, the sky might look be looking great with this. You need to keep an eye on these traffic lights. You don't want to blow them out too much. So reset that again, brighten it up again, see what it's doing. And I think we'll be safe with about plus nine. So we go with orange now, which is going to be mostly in the sky. Now, if I wanted a bit of an apocalyptic look, you could be happy with that, obviously not with the building, but the sky, um, but we don't want that. I do want to darken it though, it's going to bring in more color. So I think, yeah, looks good there. Uh, yellows, how are we looking for the yellows? Again, going to bring them, adding more color in here. So I think, yeah, I think it may be there. Greens, what are the greens doing? 
think we'll brighten the greens a bit, will we? And aquas, not much with the aquas. Aquas, yellow, green, and aqua usually deal with the green channel quite a fair bit, you'll notice. And I kind of like that. A bit nice. uh, we're going to go blue. Okay, I usually darken blue, and I'm going to darken it again here. I'm going to probably going to go about minus 24. And then I'm going to go purple as well, which I'm going to be looking at the sky once again. And just a little bit. The magentas then. Yeah, I'm not going to do much with the magentas. Maybe plus four. Now let's see. Let's toggle that on and off. See the difference. Really is some difference. It's already brought a lot more life to that sky. Let's control some of the highlights as well. So we're going to go into saturation. The way I work with saturation, I bring everything back to minus 100. And I have full black and white image. And I bring each color in individually to see which what they're doing. Double click the red to reset back to zero. And I'm going to boost that. The orange. Of course, yeah, I'm going to boost that one. Yellows, how are we looking for yellows? You can slide back and forth pretty quickly. It does, it does the job too. Um, yeah. Greens, of course, greens are going to, are going to come up a bit. The aquas, how are we going with the aquas? You can see there over here on the left hand side, on the right side of the building, the aquas are really punching that. I might bring the greens down, will I? No. Don't think I need as much blue in the, in the photo, so I might just take that down. Purple's in the sky, yeah. I just bring the rays back up a bit. And then the magentas. Now I haven't added any new colors into the image. These are all colors that are already there. I'm just emphasizing them and controlling them better. Last thing to do on this is split toning. So how I work with split toning is, if you hold the Alt button, and this is how you will do your teal and orange uh, on Instagram. If you wanted a cinematic view, you could, this is how you would do it as well. You bring in usually orange or yellow in the highlights and then usually teals into blues on the shadows. If you hold the Alt button, it's gonna show you what each color is gonna be like at full saturation. So that could be nice there if you wanted it, but we don't want that. I wanna emphasize that yellow, so think I think we'll be there, maybe about 30, would it be? Yeah, I'm just gonna type in 30 for that. Then I'm gonna bring in the saturation on it. Then you can go overboard, which would be just complete overkill, I don't like to do that. I usually only bring up about 25 or so. Then we go to the shadows again, hold all button, drag across to the blues. And you're looking for when this starts to get kind of warm within the cold. It doesn't really make any sense, but I'll show you now. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. You see the way the warmth has come in, but now it's gone a little bit too cold elsewhere. So bring it back a touch. About there, that's where I kind of like to go. And then we're gonna bring the saturation of that up again. And then your photo control, you can bring in your saturations. You, know, you can have that a little bit down, and then the balance. So if you wanted a bit more blue, you can go blue, or you can go yellow. And I tend to go towards yellow. The last thing to do now is just to bring in some uh, dodging and burning. Now I'm going to actually go back crop because I'm, I'm noticing the crop and I don't like it. So click here for crop and here's your lines. And I want to get rid of this. I know there's no point having half a building and I'm not the biggest fan of the spire. So I had the camera level. But I'm going to see if I actually work it with this line, keep that line straight. So click here and this will be whatever line I draw, it will straighten that line out. So if I click one point here and then drag across Keep that line the same. Now it's straightened up. Yeah, I like that. Now we're going to get rid of the rest. So here, and it's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. I wanted to keep some of that reflection. I might actually bring that down again a bit more, just to keep as much of that reflection as I can. So I'll run it in line with the key wall. And the road is straight. Yeah, that's looking pretty good now. Looking pretty good. Them lines are probably uh, a lot straighter now in the image too. So now, and the great thing with the vignette is it works off the crop. So it's not working off the image, it works off the crop because it's post-crop 
vignetting that you've introduced post crop. So it takes into account what your crop is and adds the vignette to that. So if you go too strong and then you add a crop, it's going to be extremely severe. So just watch out for that as well. So now what we'll do is the brush. So the brush was, what was it, 49 and it was 28. And I don't remember what the rest of the stuff was, so I'll just leave it at that. This is just going to add a bit more colour into that sky, so I'm just going to add. It doesn't have to be accurate. You see that there already. Go a bit here a bit. Just add a bit more strength to it. So we go undo. So it's a slight change. So then we go into we'll do the gradient filter. So with the gradient filter, you select that. And usually I would tell you to select the top, hold the shift, and it would evenly spread it down. But we want to do that, and then we're going to readjust the angle to go with the blues. And I usually set it normally 100 and 100 so I can see where it's affecting. But we're going to change that. So I did plus, so I'm just going to type 0.74, and the contrast was 28. And then we're going to reduce that and then rotate it. Oh, it usually goes fine on me. Yeah, about that. Okay, so now we're just gonna go with the radio filters, and this is a great way of doing dodging and burning. So before I actually do that, I just remembered that one thing I need to do is reduce the exposure of this to minus 0.15. With the dodging and burning, it is a good idea to set your image and then reduce the exposure because then you can play with exposures here. So if I uh, Increase them by say 20, bring the highlights up a little bit, shadows. I'm going to do this really quickly. There's no real theory behind it, you're just trying to add depth to the image, add a bit more drama. In some cases, just trying to just manipulate the light a bit better. It's better that it doesn't stand out, that it just fits the image and it makes the image work that bit better. And that's it. So we'll just go for before and after. So before after and when you have a crop applied it does apply it even in the before and afters That's just a quick example as to how I edit my photos in Lightroom and I'm able to achieve a vibrant and punchy image time and time after again and the whole secret is the hue, saturation, and luminance section. So many people overlook that. In some images, you don't even need to dodge and burn. That is your dodge and burn. It's also a great example as to why to shoot raw. You've got all that information you can play with, manipulate. You're not just there to take the photo. You're there to make the photo. And if you can tell your story better by how you edit the photos, well then all the better. Hope you liked that, hope you got something from it. If you did, hit that like button, even subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this. I'll be posting every week. So ring that bell to get notified when I post my videos. And until then, check me out on Facebook, Instagram, or on my site, my name plus photography equals .com. That's Mark Duffy Photography. Until the next time, later gators. I'm gonna teach you how to edit your photos in Lightroom and make them colors pop. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't have any muscles to be showing off. What the hell's going on here? Hey, get bigger. I'll show you Lightroom how to make them bigger.